Here we go. There we are. There we go. Cool. Good morning. How are you, sir? Morning. Good. Good, Kev. Good to see you. Yeah, likewise. Likewise. So, wow. What uh, what has been going on in your world? You guys are moving so ridiculously fast between acquisitions and see you. I see you everywhere. What 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 are you not doing these days? Uh, well, my wife would say I'm not home enough. So that's, uh, that's one thing that I'm not doing. <laughs> I need to be doing more of absolutely. But uh, in, in the, you know, in the travel for sure, uh, staying busy, we're, we're, uh, yeah, we're growing, we're, we're having fun. That's, that's the biggest key is we're, we're having a good time. Uh, growth is fun. Figuring out the different challenges is that growth brings is fun. It's like when, you know, when you fix the sales issue, that creates a service delivery issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, did my camera just stop again? I think it did. Oh, gosh. Let me, yeah. uh, can, uh, yeah, can we, are, we can add, we can add, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and restart. Let me, yeah, sorry about that. That's, that's I'm bizarre. Sorry. I don't know what the deal is. Let me try going into Firefox instead of Chrome. Go for it. Because I know it doesn't work in Safari. Yep, that's all right. I'll I'll keep the viewers entertained while you're while you're switching. Good thing um, this isn't live, right? Well, it, 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 we're live. It, it, oh, we great. are live. Yeah, check that we out. We are live. Didn't realize we were live. Okay, yeah. let me switch. Let me switch. My apologies yeah, here. <laughs> but for those that don't know, uh, I'm speaking with Kevin Damgani, the founder of IT Partners Plus. They are a leading managed service provider and based out of the great state of Michigan. Uh, under his leadership, they operate now in 39 states. Uh, they've been recognized four times as an Inc. 5,000 fastest growing companies in America. Uh, they've been on that list. I've been on that a couple times. I don't know, four times, maybe three times. But um, yeah, not as uh, not as uh, not as accomplished as this, Kevin. Here, let me bring him back on. There, there we go. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, good. I was just I was just I was singing your praises, right? So, so he. Yeah, I'm saying you guys operate in 39 states. You guys have been moving fast. You've acquired, so you've got this kind of great mix of organic and inorganic growth. Uh, and it was awesome that you speak all over the place. I'm saying like literally, you're you're all over the place, and you've had the privilege of uh, interviewing, uh, I guess, Vanderchuk, Gary V, and and Robert Hertkovec, uh famous at Shark Tank. So yeah, you're 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 inter international man of of amazingness, I guess. I'm scary. glad you didn't say, yeah, I, didn't, I, I was just hoping you didn't say mystery there. That would have. Uh, uh, yeah, I'd choose, choose my words wisely. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, like I said, we're, we're, we're having fun. We're having a good time. Um, yeah. But, you, you know, what I was saying was growth, growth is fun. And yeah. uh, it, it just, it, it, it like I was saying, you fix the, the sales issue. Now you've got a, um, you, you have a bottleneck in projects. And so uh, growth is just you know, trying to trying to foresee those challenges and alleviate the pressures, but then it causes other pressures. And so you're always in this state of, of uh, fixing and that's okay. That's a yeah. good thing. Uh, you, you know, it definitely could be, it could be worse. But yeah, we're, we're uh, merging with other MSPs. I mean, acquiring is one word. Yeah, we can acquire, but we're also merging um, as well. That's kind of the primary focus where MSPs can roll equity into IT partners and we can build this together. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of the primary motive of what we're doing. So yeah, we're out there on the, on the road educating. That's, that's fun. Um, there's so much wisdom and knowledge to share and to go around. Um, you know, it's rare that we run into an actual competitor. Uh, I wouldn't say that we we have competitors just because there's so much business to go around. Uh, sure. So yeah, when we're when we're on the road, it's uh, um, we're we're just sharing sharing the knowledge, and if we can help somebody else grow and you know uh, uh, forecast some of those mistakes that we made along the way, that's a win. That's a huge win. Yeah, we'll get to um, we'll get to some of these. You, unique uh, concepts of how to either merge or acquire and, you know, some of this, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to, to kind of figure this this game out, right? It's either, you know, acquire and be really integrated. There's acquire, be hands off. There's all kinds. But let's go back because uh, I think when I was reading kind of some of the notes getting prepped. So you, uh, you know, you knew you want to be self-employed at age 14. How does one know at age 14 they want to be self-employed? <laughs> That's, that's a pretty specific number. No, I just yeah, I, yeah. I just remember, you know, freshman year of high school. Uh, it's like I, I, I just wanted 
do stuff myself. So I, I had spun up this little computer repair business on the side when I was a freshman in high school and um, just knew that that was, that was just kind of my, you know, w- what I always wanted to do. Um, I, I definitely worked for some people along the way uh, and have been actually self-employed since, since age 19. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been fun. So what, what I tell the team often is the the largest company that I've, I've ever been in charge of is is the one that I'm in right now. And every day, as we add another dollar, that's now the largest company I've ever been, uh, you know, been a, uh, in charge of. So it's, it's definitely a humble blessing for sure. That's awesome. What, so what was was there a specific role model, or is there you know, what was the uh, the catalyst, or what was the trigger to you know I you know I want to be self employed. I want to do things on my own. Did you have you know any entrepreneurial feel- guidance? I it, I just feel like it's in my DNA. Uh, you know, my dad, first generation immigrant uh, from from Iran, uh, came mm. came to the country. It's, it's just one of those those American success stories that you hear uh, often. He had uh, uh, two hundred and thirty five dollars when he came here. Uh, wow. His his family had to put their entire farm uh, that they had as collateral. Uh, for him to to go to college in the U.S. Uh, to ensure that he would come and use that that U.S. education back in Iran, revolution happened, and mm. uh, you know they kind of forgot about that collateral, if you will, and so yeah. he met my mom here and and stayed. Uh, so he's just got that that immigrant grit. Uh, he worked for, um, you know, had had careers pretty much my whole growing up, but then uh, bought a business at one point, ran that, uh, it sold it to bought this this failing uh, waste management company and then ended up selling uh, that to waste management. Uh, so I, I, you know, it, it's just, I just feel like it's in my DNA. I, I, they, I, I don't know another, uh, another way. There is, you know, that's really fascinating. And I know people, I know there's probably books written about this, but the, the wave of, of Persian or Iranian, immigrants right around the revolution is not just only fascinating just because of you know all the 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 historical context of it but the entrepreneurial i guess avenues that were opened up or created by a lot of the iranians that came over you know not just to the u.s but elsewhere i mean how entrepreneurial they had to be at that point i mean that's i don't know i'm I'm sure there's books written about it but it's it's incredible how many people you run into that have that kind of that story that background and how much of uh you know influence throughout the 80s and 90s and obviously today that um that's had on entrepreneurship and just small business in general in the states I and mean, it's fascinating yeah yeah, yeah. It, there's uh definitely a lot of a lot of his friends uh growing up a lot of them uh business owners and you know leaders in in their own organizations and things like that uh, so i i don't know what what it is but uh, maybe, maybe it's cultural or, or something else, but I, I think there's, there's so many different segments, uh, yeah. not just Iranians. There's just that immigrant mentality. Um, you know, yeah. w- when you're talking to Robert Hershevik, his story is, you know, his dad came over and they did kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, that's fascinating. Also, uh, I guess read up on you that, uh, at some point you wanted to do, uh, you wanted to be a pilot, right? Or fly uh, Air Force One. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of, one of your prep questions is, what did you want to do as a kid? Uh, and, yeah. and, you know, yeah. as a, as a kid, that was, that was it. It was, it was, uh, I, I don't know, t- till like age 10, I was, I was obsessed with, with, uh, wanting to join the air force and, and fly the president around. But that was, yeah. that was just like, you know, some kids are firemen, some kids are pilots and I, I wanted to be a pilot for air force one. <laughs> Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't say it publicly, but one of my neighbors uh, happens to be uh, in and around that area uh, of uh, occupation. So maybe, I don't know. Really? Not that you'd ever really? be, yeah, not that you'd be able to get you on Air Force One, but uh, yeah, it's fascinating to hear some of the stories. Uh, oh, I'm so maybe, sure. I'll, maybe I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to, in, uh, you know. Let, let's connect know. offline. Yeah, there you go. All right. So got this entrepreneurial bug. Um, you know, 19 kind of started kind of your first, you know, business. Uh, and then obviously you've been just, you know, grinding away, building and building and building. And you had a really in- interesting inflection point, uh, I guess last year, right? I guess, um, with the, the first of, of, uh, I guess many, uh, 
mergers or, or acquisitions, right? And, and kind of building up uh, the business. Let's get into that. Like, tell me what that was like. Well, yeah, I mean, it started, gosh, 2022, we interviewed probably about 35 private equity firms, just mm -hmm. trying to figure out what do we want to do? Do we want to, do we want to uh, uh, um, fold into something else? Or do we want to do it ourselves? Obviously, the answer was we want to do it ourselves. We're not private equity backed, which is really unique in this space. Um, yeah. In the space of rollups, uh, because most of you know most of the peers and colleagues that I speak with, uh, you know they they are private equity backed. Nothing wrong with that. Private equity's mm -hmm. done such amazing things for our for the MSP space. Um, it's brought a lot of attention to it. It's it's uh, driven up all of our collective values. So we yeah. can all be grateful for you know for that. Um, so definitely nothing wrong with private equity, but. As we we were looking for the right fit, and we just didn't find it. Uh, and you know, we have our reasons why we didn't find it. Yeah, part was uh, just uh, we we have a a business plan that's you know that's centered around um, you know our partner experience uh, and our culture. Uh, there were other people that match that, but maybe didn't match the the right terms that we wanted uh, or were were looking for. So uh, yeah, we ventured ventured in uh, to do it ourselves. Uh, we wanted to do two transactions last year. We ended up doing one. Uh, one of them fell through kind of in the 11th hour. Um, this year, we're, we're on track to do four. Uh, wow. Next year, uh, six is our goal, and then 10 a year from there. So we have a pretty aggressive strategy, uh, finding, uh, you know, finding the, the right partners to come alongside of us to, to be able to support that vision and, and you know, that, the, the right mix of business owners that, you know, can kind of see the vision that we have that we're uh, merging in and that are rolling equity in to be able to uh, help us achieve that has been, uh, has been fun. It's been, like I said in the beginning, it's been, it's been a really good time. Yeah. One of the things that I, I've enjoyed over the last couple of years since I've gotten to know you and watching you know, IT partners is that you guys do have a, it looks like a really fun culture. Um, you know, the way you guys present the the business, the way you guys go to market, obviously you're out there speaking, connecting with a, a lot of people. Uh, and it, it seems like, I mean, we, talk, we kind of talked about this in Chicago, uh, was it last week or so when we did the, uh, the first m and Roadshow, talked about this really interesting dynamic that's occurring right now where a lot of, MSPs, I think, I think the, the stat was the average MSP in the room when we did that M&A event was founded in 2006. And so they're almost 20 years on. I was and, fascinated by that stat. Yeah, it was, it was pretty wild. And, and it, and it kind of reinforced some of the, some of my, my thinking and that, you know, we're at this point, you know, serious inflection point for a lot of uh, business owners in this space, right? Where they're saying, all right, I'm 15, 20, 25 years on. You know, it's kind of run its course. I'm looking to do, you know, you know, something, you know, next, either be a part of something bigger or just exit completely. Um, and then if you look at, you know, kind of culture and you look at, you know, growth and and just where, you know, some of these MSPs in this market are moving fast and, and you know, just doing really cool stuff. I have to imagine those conversations that you have with some of the prospects, right, the companies that are looking to be acquired. Imagine that that plays a lot into it. The culture that you guys have built, you know, and kind of the excitement and the energy around what what you guys do and, and how you guys are going to market. Yeah, you know, I I, I want to kind of talk about that in a in a unique way. Um, and so what what kind of started this this uh, uh, where we're at today? I, we were, I wasn't always having fun in business. I mean, 14 of the, the 17 years that I was in business, I hated it. Um, when I say hated it, I, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't change anything. It's all that I knew, but I didn't realize how stressed and burnt out I was until yeah. I was able to, you know, th there's that adage in business. Are you running the business or is the business running you? Well, for 14 years, the business was running me. I was not running the business. Yeah. And that, that was the, you know, the stress. Once we reached a turning point, we realized oh, it, and started to, to uh, invest time into this, the, building this strategy that we're on. What we realized is we're looking to uh, help business owners that are kind of in that same or were in that are or were or close to that same um, area of, of the business running them 
in that maybe under $5 million in revenue range. And, uh, you know, that, that five, 10, 15, 20 employees, uh, uh, that similar story. It's like, okay, I'm really good at fixing computers. I, I call it the accidental business owner. Uh, yeah. So the, the, I'm really good at fixing computers. I love helping people. I'm really good with technology. And so they got too busy. And so they needed to hire an employee so to help them out. So they hire an employee and now they got to do HR. They got to do payroll. They got to do all these things. It's like, well, I really like helping people with the technology and I got to do all this other stuff, uh, yeah. the finances. And, uh, being able to be part of something bigger collectively, like, you know, what we're doing, we're, we're allowing these business owners to find the, you know, to use an EOS term, the, the right person in the right seat. So, mm -hmm. Hey, here's, here's something that you're really good at and you love doing great own that area. And we'll, we'll, we've got the people that love doing the finance, love doing the HR, love doing all this other stuff. Uh, and great, they they stay in in those lanes and own those, and and we can have business owners own the lanes that they really enjoy doing, and get back to what they love and relieve a lot of that stress. Yeah, there's you know having been through you know several acquisitions now, uh, there is something really liberating about you know, and I I I straddle that kind of that line of being an operator and then wanting to be out there and be you know the personality and out front and all what what have you, but and sometimes I gotta yeah, kind of keep my operational um I don't know aspirations in check. But there is something very, I think, liberating when you get to the point and you realize that, you know, you know, you spent the last 20 years doing everything and you might be doing everything, you know, okay, right? But yep. you know, after through acquisition, if you're able to focus on one or two really like specific things and you know, kind of passions. You know and, and push the other stuff aside and you know being part of a bigger organization it's i mean that's a, it's very liberating i think that's that's um you always you always look for kind of that cultural alignment and you really try to have that you know i guess phrase come to jesus you know before the acquisition to make sure that you know there's going to be cultural alignment after acquisition and and you know it's uh everyone's kind of you know on the same page moving forward but I think that's under often really underestimated is in kind of that post acquisition and, and the potential liberation that it creates for the company that's being acquired because you're being absorbed into something larger to your point, better, you know, operations, you know, documentation, you know, you got all the infrastructure set up. And so I imagine, you know, when you're going through that process, you're having pretty, pretty deep conversations with the, the business owners about, you know, life after acquisition. You know, I, I uh, talked with three companies yesterday, actually I had three meetings yesterday um, that were all kind of newer into uh, uh, entertaining the idea of partnering with us. And so, you know, that's what I spent a lot of my time doing. And what I told each one of those three yesterday uh, to that point is most of my time is, uh, you know, I, I put on the hat and I, I am not a therapist. I, I don't even play one on TV. I'm not that good. But a lot of a lot of my time spent is is uh, focusing on what is it that you love doing and what is it that you are good at? And, you know, we also want to focus what do you not like doing and what are you not good at and finding the right spot and helping those owners understand what it, what does it look like after a merger and what is, what is their role look like and, and being really clear because a lot of times they've never thought that way. I, they're so used to operating uh, the business, the entire business. So to think, wait a minute, there's a way that I, don't have to do all these things that I don't enjoy doing. Like for me, um, I I can do the day to day. I'm not good at it, but I can do it, uh, and I'm exhausted by it. And um, I, I understand the day to day, but there's people that are better out there than I am at that. And and so realizing that we can use each other's strengths in in what we're good at has has just been, um, you know, it, it's really eye opening when you start to present that over time. The, mm -hmm. I probably meet with the owners uh, 10 times before we we get under a contract uh, for an LOI contract. And probably six of those times is talking about 
what does their role look like and what is, you know, the nit and gritty and, uh, uh, and then maybe only two of those conversations are about price and two, uh, two more about miscellaneous stuff. So yeah, most of it is, is exactly that what you were talking about, Kev. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, that, that comes from experience, right? That's, you know, one that self-awareness of what the, what you are good at and what you should be doing, uh, is that only comes with experience, right. And having, you know, the cool thing is that you've been on both sides of the table, right. You've been, you know, kind of the, the solo operator. And then now you're kind of, you're bringing in kind of looking at it from, you know, the, the operator's point of view, but then as part of a larger organization. And I think, you know, that's a, that's a, a great spot to be in because you can, you can empathize with the decisions that they have to make uh, or they're, they're contemplating going through this process. So, so you guys have a, a pretty aggressive strategy this year, right. And, you know, three or four acquisitions, um, you know, and then, looking out into 25 and 26 and we talked about some of this stuff up in up in chicago but you know this market's projected to have a really healthy you know compounded annual growth rate you know you're, you're up above 10 12 you know even some are putting it at like 15 percent you know year over year so for you what does that look like in you know two three years is it four acquisitions a year is it hey we're going to get to you know, we have a strategic kind of acquisition model. We want, you know, one over here on the West Coast, one over here on the East Coast. What, what, you know, what does IT partners look like in, in three years? Yeah, yeah, good question. We have a, a pretty clear three-year roadmap. Uh, we we want to have, uh, at the end of three years, have completed a total of 20 acquisitions. And wow. so mergers or acquisitions. And so that's that's what that would look like. Um, as a cumulative total, we we want to uh, be in in ten major metros um, as well. So it doesn't need like, you know our acquisition targets don't need to be in a metro, but we want ten of those to to be in a major metro. Ten of the twenty, um, you know, we can we can play on economies of scale and and other you know other things there. Um, we we want to remain a culture focused company as well in three years. Uh, we. Um, uh, we've also got some, you know, fun vision items in there too. Uh, what the driving, the driving force, uh, it, it, on, on what we do is, is just around positively impacting people so that it starts with, with our team here. Um, you know, when, when it starts with our team, we can make a really good impact on our team. Then we can make a really good impact on our partners. Um, uh, and, and kind of exude that culture out to them. And if we're doing those two things right, hopefully we're making we're making a lot of money in, in the process, and then we can uh, impact that the outer ring, and and that's the community. And so our our long term vision past three years just has one thing on it that we want to do a million dollars a year in community support. Uh, we wow. don't have a revenue goal. We don't have um, a bottom line goal. We don't have anything else. It's just a million dollars a year in in uh, impacting the community. And uh, uh, we're doing some fun stuff around there, so we can make a lot of money and uh, you know support support our team, and so hopefully support our teams well, uh, but but also um, make an impact uh, around us I I at the same time. Yeah, talk about you know that that's a one hell of a, a statement on culture there. I mean that's 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 fantastic. Um, all right, so last couple questions. So you're. You know, you're an MSP, you're looking to potentially uh, be acquired or raise money or, or what have you, looking at different paths or outcomes. You know, what does that process or timeline look like? Is it, you know, can it be accomplished in 30 days? Does it take three years? And, you know, what does it take to get to the point where you're you're ready to entertain those conversations? Uh, oh, for for us. So yeah, one of my biggest focuses right now is is trying to find the right financing partner. We have a financing partner now that'll get us through the end of the year, um, you know, to finance these acquisitions. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you know, I've been spending since uh, December of last year trying to find the right financing partner uh, mm -hmm. to be able to take us uh, for the rest of that runway that we're looking at. We don't want to yeah. keep making a change, and uh, so that's what I spend a lot of my time in right now doing. We estimate that maybe in in uh, four and a half years time. So we have, you know, kind of a five year uh, a five year plan that we're in May now. So a half half a, uh, a year into, so four and a half years time that that will probably be the time that we need to take on private equity or something. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and in exchange for uh, shares of our company, 
out that are outside of of the collective owners, which will mm -hmm. also allow you know us uh, us as owners uh, to get uh, additional uh, money off the table. But that's what we estimate as our runway is is probably four and a half years, and then probably another transaction would happen at the eight year mark from now. Yeah, and I think that's, that's I think it's really interesting kind of looking out that far because the idea that you're bringing on twenty acquisitions, but the the value, the valuations at that point, you know, because you know, you know, there's healthy valuations in general in the marketplace, but if you're at that scale with 20, 20 mergers or acquisitions underneath you, you know, the value valuation at that point and the multiples and kind of the outcome for all those involved, I mean, that that's uh, that could be pretty significant. Yeah, and and that's the thing is we we uh, hopefully we, or everything's. You know what? What is the, what are those uh, ads or ads you see is like past results are not indicative of future performance. So there's my <laughs> disclaimer. But yeah. you know, hopefully we're we're growing, and so yeah. the MSPs that are rolling in equity today at today's valuation, um, we're I just did a, a scenario. We're looking to at today's valuation when we look to take on private equity in four and a half years, we're looking to be 7.4 uh, times today's valuation when we mm -hmm. we look to do that. So. Uh, in a uh, probably a bad uh, a bad reference point because nobody likes multi level marketing. But I'm in Grand Rapids. It's the land of Amway. It's where Amway was founded. Uh, it's actually their headquarters is right down the road here. Uh, so to use a horrible market mar a multi level marketing reference, get in early and you make more money. Uh, right. That's that's kind of the the approach right now that we're we're doing. It is what it is, right? So give me that one. <laughs> One nugget for uh, for the MSP owner, you know, if they're again thinking about going down this path or process. So one thing, what's the first thing they need to do with their business before they go down this process? You're talking about like merging into us, or if they wanted to execute a plan like what we're doing? No, just yeah, it, with, it, whether they want to merge or whether they want to be, uh, you know, raise money or you know, yeah. what, what what advice do you have for an MSP that's trying to get their house in order? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, and I think you'll hear it often from a lot of probably the people that you you've talked to as well on the podcast. Uh, get get your financial house in order. Uh, so you you know if you're a business owner that's running what what uh, is termed in our industry the lifestyle business that you're you're the the sole owner uh, and you're running a lot of personal transactions through the business. Yeah, great. You you might be saving some on taxes, but that's going to also impact your valuation. Now. Any any uh, company like ours can give you credit for those personal expenses back. They're called ad backs. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, you, you know those those are always uh, an option there. But the less that you have to sift through the financials and you can say, hey, here's a clean set of books, uh, that's going to be uh, much better looking for an, uh, somebody than not having that. Now, yeah. if you're looking to raise money. Th then my my I, I'm going to triple down on my advice. A clean set of books is is paramount if you're looking yeah. to do any sort of capital raises or or venture on a plan like this. Um, you know, I I've talked to uh, actually last week. Um, I talked to uh, right after the the show in Chicago that we were at together. Uh, your your M and A Road Show. Um, which is also, I, I'm going to uh, make a plug. Uh, you, we were just talking in the green room right before we, we jumped live on this. Uh, the content that you guys had at that show was great. And I know you have another one coming up. So shameless plug for your one in Costa Mesa, uh, California. Mm -hmm. But if you're if you're an MSP looking to, to evaluate what that looks like, the, if, if I was in the audience uh, two years ago and I, I saw what I saw, I would be way, way more ahead than where I'm at today. And so um, listen to those experts that are on stage. Uh, you're going to hear a lot about talking about your financial house and getting that in order and what that looks like. And maybe that's not you as an owner. For a lot of years, that wasn't me as an owner. But there's other people out there that are good at that stuff and can advise you. You don't have to be great at it as an owner to have great financials. You just find the right partner to be able to help you. Or yeah. employee, if you're big enough to hire a, a dedicated uh, financial. A lot of people have their spouse running their finances and their spouse uh, doesn't have a background in finances. Okay. Um, but it kind of checks, checks a box. Hey, I can pay my spouse, uh, you know, this salary and it makes sense on taxes, but you're really not running a business at that point. You're running um, 
I don't want to use the word charity, but what what help me out here with the word? But you're you're running a lifestyle uh, business, really. Like, yeah, that's exactly that's it. It's a lifestyle business, and you know, it, it's kind of mom and pop, and and mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, you know, it, for some, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but if but you're you if you're like, thinking about exiting, you gotta and you want more money for your exit, you gotta start doing this stuff three years ahead. When I yeah. sold my first company, and Kev, I, I'd love your your input too. But when I sold my first company, um, we prepped for that for three and a half years because our books were were crap, if for lack of a better term. And so when we said, "Hey, we want to sell," we got a valuation, and we're like, uh, "Absolutely not!" And it's right. not that we grew a ton in that time um, to get the valuation that we wanted. We spent because we needed we needed a track record of yeah. of you know clean good numbers that showed good profit, and and so we pulled the personal expenses out. We, um, you know, we, we redid our PL to, you know, a lot of, a lot of little changes like that, but we had to get a, a, a good, um, you, you had to get a lot of history to be able to get the valuation that we wanted. Yeah. Look, I mean, every business that I've been involved with or advised or invested in or what have you, I mean, that's the first thing that, uh, you look for, you look at, you know, obviously there's different models, you know, uh, you know, you know there are different ways to run the books, different, you know, levers that you pull, whether it's, you know, services versus software, but yeah, that's one of the first things. And I was going to say, there's, there's some really fantastic fractional, um, uh, you know, CFO types out there that are starting to, to pop up on this and this marketplace. In fact, my CFO, uh, from ID agent, I try to try to, you know, wrangle them back into, uh, the channel program. But by the time that, uh, we got our, our feet off the ground, he'd already started a fractional uh, CFO, uh, business and he does phenomenal work with software companies and MSP. So there are some great resources out there and that might be a, a great intermediary step for MSPs to get their house in order before they can afford to bring somebody on full time. Uh, or for some, it might be, that might just be the the move is bring somebody external and, and get the economies or what have you. But yeah, I agree with you. I think getting kind of the financial house in order and then you know, looking out maybe 18 months, 24 months, you know, in some cases, depending on complexity, three years uh, as the target to be acquired. Uh, so that's, um, yeah, a lot of things to think through uh, from that perspective. But so you guys are, are moving ridiculously fast. You guys are are, are out in the forefront. You're, you're probably one of the most connected uh, gentlemen in the MSP industry. Uh, so for that, I, I thank you for your time this morning. Uh, and I'm going to enjoy continue to watch you guys grow and, and, you know, on this acquisition and roll up strategy you guys have. So it's been a pleasure chatting with you, sir, this morning. Oh, thanks and, for um, having us on Kev. I appreciate it very much. Absolutely. We'll have some links to, uh, how you can connect with Kevin and, and, uh, IT partners plus in the show notes, but it definitely, uh, definitely connect with Kevin. Cause if you got questions about the process, you, you're, you know, I think this is one of the great things about this industry. Is that uh, the willingness to to have a conversation and and educate? Oh, just share you know, knowledge. Yeah, if I could help really, in any way, absolutely. Yep. Hey, before we go, uh, one um, shameless plug here. That's uh, something a little bit different. Uh, we're we're uh, we're doing some uh, IT partners is doing some incredible work in Uganda, and I have the privilege of of leaving actually on Friday in a couple of days from now and bringing a couple of people from our team over there to install some computer labs uh, uh, for people that um, just don't have access to, to technology. And yeah. um, uh, we're, we're partnered with some really cool resources. They just had their, uh, one of the schools just had their roof torn off in like a dust up. Um, wow. And IT Partners is doing a two to one match right now. Uh, we've got some budget left for that. Uh, if you go to givebutter.com slash ITPAR, givebutter.com slash ITPAR. Uh, so my shame, shameless plug is uh, if, if you're wanting to donate and, and uh, look at the story on what we're doing, uh, take a look at that, that website there. Nothing shameless about that and glad to, glad to plug that. And we'll definitely put those in the notes as well. And, and uh, again, that that's, that's the cultural alignment, man. That's just what we're talking about. That's just great stuff. So keep up the great work. Cool. Thanks, Kev. Hey, pleasure. Yep. Thank you.